Welcome back. Now we've touched on the subject of disinformation, Gary, and just I'll provide one example of a piece of disinformation which I think probably worked extremely well. Mm. And people can perhaps start to get an understanding of how disinformation works. Um, many people are aware of the alien autopsy. Um, well, there was a film in 2006 which featured Ant, Ant Deck, Deck, yeah, and then also the 1994 video made by Ray, Ray Santilli, Santilli of this alleged alien autopsy, which yep. was uh, shown at particular UFO conferences first. Uh, it and was put out as real. Put out as real, uh, big song and dance. We've got this alien autopsy footage, and it was proven to be fake. Um, however, if you look at um, people such as Philip J. Corso and uh, another chap uh, who I'm going to talk about in, a, in another show called Edgar Fouché, they had information or intelligence in particular documents uh, about an alleged autopsy. Because if you, re if you research uh, the Roswell story, there's vast amounts of concrete evidence that, that Roswell was a real event. Oh, absolutely. It, it absolutely. freaked out the, the, the military in, in, in the United States at that time. A cover-up was ordered. It was a well and almost room. certainly, had they recovered bodies, which we do believe that they did, mm -hmm. they would have done autopsies because exactly. they, w they would have wanted to know the physiology of these aliens. Yeah, that's what we would do. And there was allegedly four or five uh, beings that were identical. Yeah, uh, absolutely identical genetically. I think uh, various characteristics. I think they were about four feet tall. Now. There's a lot of testimony from people like Corso and others, uh, Glenn Dennis who worked at the morgue, yeah, people like yeah. that, and there's the nurse's testimony. So there's a lot of testimony that alien autopsies did take place. Absolutely. Right now. That's um, what we would do. If we came across an alien in our garden, the yeah. biologists would come away and say, look, I want to examine this. Yeah. It's only what we would do. Now there's documents being produced by researchers before the Ray Santilli footage. Now, um, w w uh, Edgar Fouché suggests that what happened there is that a copy of the real autopsy video w w got into a particular uh, the wrong hands or someone got a copy of a copy. Mm -hmm. Somehow it was leaked and they mm -hmm. weren't sure whether this was going to be made public. Mm -hmm. So what they did, they sponsored and paid someone to make a very close copy, copy mm -hmm. uh, with a fake alien and put in several things which would make the thing debunkable, which mm. people could uh, say that it's not genuine because of X, Y, and Z, so they put those things in. So that if at some point in the future that video ever did surface or detailed testimony came out from a credible whistleblower, they've completely poisoned the case. No, I, I, and I, I absolutely agree with you. I, th I think the, the alien autopsy Ray Santoli footage was a classic piece of disinformation to muddy the waters uh, and to take it, take, divert people's attention from probably the real story of Roswell, etc., and the fact that there probably had been real autopsies. Mm -hmm. um, the disinformation works tremendously well, and what pu the public need to realise is that whenever we talk about UFOs, we should always talk about UFOs and ufology and set it in its context. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever as it appears mm -hmm. in ufology. So you can't just pick up a book and say, this is the history of ufology. There are many different layers because this is dealing with things that governments and certainly the Americans do not want mm -hmm. the public to ever really know what's the mm -hmm. best evidence of what's gone on. Mm -hmm. So I think that the those people who got involved in the Santilli footage was a deliberately mm -hmm. ploy disinformation to actually yeah. uh, kind of like rubbish the yeah, whole thing exactly. and trivialise it as in the they, media. As they say, the best lie is one that is very close to the truth. Oh, absolutely, because it's a fine line. Yeah. Now, um, I'm going to stick my neck out and because um, I think similar things have gone on in the UK with regards trying to uh, put disinformation about say, secret bases or mind control or super soldiers and all of that kind of thing and um, one claim is that there is an underground facility at a place called Peasmore. Mm -hmm. Now this has this has been put out by one particular researcher who I won't name just yet but um, I've done my own investigation into that area mm -hmm. completely separate from any claim. Now I have found several pieces of evidence 
uh, nothing to do with Barry King, okay? Several pieces of evidence uh, which I've got, which tells me that there is an underground facility at Peasmore. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's aliens there, I don't think there's trip seats there, and I don't think um, what Barry King says is there. Uh, but I think there is something there. In my opinion, there's something important at Peasmore under the ground, mm -hmm. and the Barry King material has been put out uh, in advance in case any genuine whistleblower comes forward and speaks about that base because okay some people will believe Barry King that there's reptilians and greys and mm. uh, seats that people get put in to read their mind and this kind of thing and programmable life forms that have been grown in vats and this kind of stuff some people will believe that mm -hmm. and they will believe just his word on that okay uh, most people won't believe it but if a whistleblower come out talking about a base at Peasmore now a credible whistleblower, a yep. military whistleblower or a scientist, yep. their information would be laughed at because the Barry King story is already out there and it's on the internet. And oh. it's similar to the Ray Santilli disinformation. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, th I think it's a classic disinformation tool is that if you're really worried about a particular place, a particular story, you put out a cover story to muddy the waters. And if you think yeah. about Rendlesham Forest, mm -hmm. that's exactly what we think has gone on, mm -hmm. is that the interrogations, that the Larry Warren story, uh, Colonel Hall has always said that Larry Warren was messed with and that he was implanted with a false memory. Larry Warren absolutely believes it. I've talked to him and he absolutely believes it. But he, but the same token, he knows that he was minds was messed with, so he can't say for certain he believes it was real, but he doesn't know. So, but you know, we talk about the binary codes mm. and Jim Peniston. Well, when I did my research for UFO Truth magazine, I f I found that there was a, a, a the glimpses of other realities by Linda Moulton. Now there was a tra partial transcript of his 1994 hypnosis, and in the book it actually says that one of the first questions is from the interrogators: "Can you see the binary codes?" Jim Penniston replies, "Yeah, I can see the binary codes." Well, if that's the case, that's an implanted memory. Right. The interrogator is saying, can you see the binary code? Can you see the lighthouse? Yeah, I can see the lighthouse. Yeah, yeah I can see the binary codes. Right. That is not fresh information. That's derived information when somebody else right. has mentioned it first. So, so I mean, Larry Warren, uh, Gary, uh, a lot of the original witnesses say he wasn't there, but he believes he was there, and his story is different from... The, the, other, the, the witnesses, their stories generally tally, they line up broadly. Yeah, but his doesn't. Cause yeah, he, but but he but his scenario is complicated, and it's. I do believe he was there. I do mm. believe he was at peripheral post, and I do believe he was brought into where the uh, uh, a lot of the people were waiting in a mm. clearing, ready to go forward. Mm. Holt's team goes out, and I think then Larry gets involved in something. Gets he, he gets interrogated several times, so we know that he's messed with. We know that. Peniston was interrogated, given truth serum, mm. that kind of thing. Um, the, 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 but there's people like Adrian Bastinza who partially back up what Larry will say. There are people who, like Steve Laplume who will say that you know Larry was there and uh, and and this in Cable mm. Green scenario happened. The, the 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 real question is and. Rather than point fingers and say you're lying like that, for me, the Rendlesham Forest story is all about everything, and the good bits, the bad bits. The you can't just like the bits that you like and miss the bits that you don't like. Mm. It's the whole story, and really, for me, all of the witnesses should really be working together and just saying, "Yeah, I might not necessarily agree with your part, but you're a part of it." Mm. So, and Larry, that's, that, that's so in order to get Larry Warren to twist his testimony, let's put it that way, and well, mess with him, what, what do you think they've done with him? To, well, to Holt think? has always gone on the uh, basis that to negate the impact of his night yeah. when he's out with his team, that the Larry Warren was, it was implanted with a false memory mm. that was so fanciful... Yeah. The beings, the meeting, the general, the Colonel the Williams were what? were floating outside right. kind of entities, translucent entities. But it was like so fantastical that it would negate from the, in a sense, the quality of, of what Holt was saying, yeah. who was a senior officer. Now, I don't know the truth one way or the other, but what I'm saying is I can certainly see uh, and take Holt's 
perspective that that's what the disinformation tool would be mm -hmm. oh we we've got a hole here cool this could be a game changer with his team beams coming down beams in the weapon storage area Oof, let's let's interrogate this yeah. young fresh 19 year old fresh from training let's let's implant a false memory based on a bit of truth because he was there he was on the periphery we'll mix fact and fiction mm -hmm. we'll mess his mind up and it has messed his mind up and he will say that mm -hmm. he's traumatized by it even now mm -hmm. And if the story ever breaks, we're going to have arguments about the witnesses. And that, if you think about it, that's all we've had since. Yeah. You've got different parties arguing with each other. Yeah. But now we've had the binary code re revelations in 2010 from Jim Penniston, which I feel very suspect about, because it just doesn't seem to me credible to, after 30 years, you're going to hide this and then suddenly tell somebody, the one person for me who we should have told, mm. uh, who we could have told was John Burroughs, who was with him in the forest. So when he says, who, who do I tell? You know, I couldn't tell anybody. Well, he could tell John Burroughs and he never did until October 2010. That to me as a detective doesn't make yeah. sense. So, you know, and when I look at the the hypnosis transcript, for me, that when somebody says, can you see in the binary codes first, then that's somebody introducing the subject to binary codes before Penniston voluntarily says, yeah, yeah. I can see the binary codes. It's like he's been led. Uh, information uh, is being pumped into him. It, it, so it could be disinformation it, too. It might be true that an extraterrestrial or non-human civilization would use binary codes. I personally doubt it. Um, so what were the binary codes allegedly saying? Well, basically, in the, the program was made for ancient aliens, and this is what they referred to when it came out in, at the Woodbridge Conference in mm. December 2010. And they were limited what they could say, but what the documentary went on to say is that their particular mine record specialist had, uh, had looked at, I think, six pages of what was, in fact, 16 pages of binary. Uh, but it depends on who you're talking to. Sometimes mm. he'll say it's 12, sometimes it was 14, so six, which again, I think I'd know if I'd wrote 16 pages, I'd know it was 16 and always say it was 16, not 12 yeah. or 14. But the binary code specialist that the Ancient Aliens program used said that there were seven locations, geographical coordinates around the world, including one high Brazil, which is a mythical island right. off, Brazil, so, off, off island. So do you know, you see, if you're going to interpret binary code into something understandable, right, you have to um, what, how it's done on a computer is it's it's put into eight bit ASCII code. Yeah. Right. So did it uh, did he did he convert it into ASCII? Do you know? I believe so. I mean, he was apparently a binary code specialist, right, and right. I'm not. But if, it, if, it, it was basically planetary advance. You know, right. like a continuing um, study. Okay. And, and and Jim Penniston believed it was time travellers from the so, future. But, but just, are you sure it was ASCII? Because no, no, I'm not an expert. Right, right, it might not have been ASCII. Because if it was ASCII, there's no way. <laughs> it's, uh, there's no way an extraterrestrial is going to be working in ASCII code. It's, I don't know. I'm not, very, I'm not. I'm not a binary a code specific. expert at all. Right. Oh, well, maybe. I sh maybe I should look into that and find out. Yeah. And, no, and, I think. And, I think and, you should. And, yeah. and then add it in. Because but in, uh, in the in the in the end, what I'm saying is, it, uh, he made inconsistent remarks, Jim Peniston, mm -hmm. and until his police pocketbook was given to independent researchers who could check the edge of the paper mm -hmm. for those 16 pages and the edge of the ink to verify that they were 34 years old mm. etc and now he says he's willing to do that but I haven't seen any evidence that oh, it's right. actually gone to any independent labs right it needs to be done to have any chance of being accepted as a credible story mm. because if it was in his pocketbook from 1918 he could prove it through the quality of the paper that it wasn't added and and, and it was the ink etc then it would add more credibility to what he was mm -hmm. saying but unless those tests are done that, that it's going to sound like a real wild story that's come out just to make money and that's how it looks so this is what the, he would term an automatic message that he got the binary code yeah from. he said he had a, he touched the symbols and he got a download oh, of I information right. and the next day he felt compelled to write it down and he felt a lot better when he wrote, right. wrote these 16 pages but, of zeros and ones. But he never said that in his initial testimony. No, he? no. So uh, how uh, many uh, years is it before he came out with that story? Uh, he didn't mention it until uh, December 2010 when he told oh. at the Woodbridge Conference. However, the, the conundrum in all of this is that he was interviewed in 1994 and binary cords are talked about in 1994. So to my mind, how can he in 2010 stand up in front of the audience and say, I didn't know what they were?
Well, well he knew in 1994 what they were because when he watched the video back, if he didn't know what binary codes were and he watches it and he's talking about binary codes, he'd say, well, what's binary codes? And somebody would have told him. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. All right. Well, um, anyone who wants to meet Larry Warren, who was allegedly there at Randlesham, where well, do I, do, I, do, I do think he was there yeah. and he's the original well, whistleblower and I like the guy, to, but he knows us, he's been messed with. Tell us where people can meet him. Uh, he, he's going to be the co-host at the uh, 2014 UFO Truth Magazine conference, August 16th and 17th, Holmfirth, Holmfirth Civic Hall in West Yorkshire. Go to the website www.ufotruthmagazine.co.uk for all the information on how to get tickets. All right, thanks then, Gary. And remember, believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night. Good night.